from Santa Fe, New Mexico. It's coming to the end of the Saturday, I believe today is. And um, I was out here walking around, checking things out, and I noticed I had signal-ish. And it's been a while since I've gone live, so I thought I would just give it a try. And being that it is Saturday, maybe people are bored, want to see the progress, the update, not sure. Um, or maybe I don't have signal at all. So we'll see. I guess you guys can let me know if you can see it or not. Every time I have gone live, the only place I had signal is up in the loft, and that kind of gets boring. All right, so there's two people. Let me know if you guys can hear me or not. I was just out here walking around, and I noticed I had two bars, <laughs> which is pretty good. So I just thought I'd give it a try. Uh, if I'm glitching and I'm not coming through, just let me know. I won't waste any of your guys' time, but it is Saturday, and I just thought it'd be nice to show you guys a little bit of an update. Uh, am I coming through? Uh, what's going on, Mackenzie? All right, awesome. Well, um, happy Saturday coming up to the end of the day. And I figured out or I calculated today is work day 30. We've been on this coop for 30 days, not 30 calendar days. Today is the 30th day of actual construction. And to be honest with you, I was hoping to be done by now, but we're not. And it is what it is, all things considered with everything that's going on with COVID and materials. I mean, we even had a hell of a time getting paint because uh, it's so limited in the country it is going really really well this coop is huge there's tons of details uh, we finally finished all the purlins uh, that are the boards that run this way up on top of the roof and av and i have been doing the fascias today we got the rakes on we got two more boards you can see we got a rake that has to go there and one that has to go on the other side and as i was saying earlier i just happened to be walking out here admiring it checking it out and Notice I had two bars, so I wasn't sure if it was worth going live or not. And it has been a while. Here's the other side of the coop. Same thing, we got a rake going there. And I just found out, AV's never painted before, so he just got the sprayer in his hand. He was actually doing a pretty good job, and I'll show you. I'll tell you, if you ever got to paint something large, spraying is the way to go. Just got done painting that fascia there. So we're getting there. It has been a bear. Look at that beautiful, there's one door that's going to go on the back over here and i'm kind of staying over here because i know i think i have better signal but you can see that big opening so there's two doors that are going to go there and then the other one is not even sure i think we counted there's a total 24 functioning doors on this coupe it's absolutely huge and i tell you i couldn't be happier that rake is just absolutely beautiful so uh, thank you i appreciate it i i tell you um you know, I love to go live just to kind of say hi and why not. It's kind of a new fun thing to do, at least for us. And um, we always need to be very respectful of our customers. And I, I just, I don't know, want to be very careful. I think, again, they're okay with me going live. I just got to be, can't see their house, can't see anything. So that's the most important thing. But we want to see the coop. And I definitely love showing you guys kind of a little bit what goes on in between the uh, different stages of the builds. There's so much going on with this coupe, but I can tell you that I've been getting, I don't know how many videos that we're gonna be able to have for the final walk around video. So many little video clips or B-roll as they call it. So it's gonna be awesome. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it. And um, no one's gotten hurt, which is good. I was a little worried. Uh, yeah, definitely gotta keep the customers happy. And I tell you, we are so lucky. I always say it, chicken people are the best people. Almost every single day, our customers here have brought us lunch. And not just regular lunch, like really good lunch. And I tell you, we've been on the road now. We started in the uh, coop I'm not allowed to talk about yet. I don't know if you guys remember that over in Rogers, Arkansas. Still been on the road. Uh, so we're on six, seven weeks now. So any meal coming from home is awesome. So I hope you guys are doing well. If you have any questions, let me know. Yeah, it is not easy. I tell you, there's so many things that... Uh, you have to think about, you really have to think about when you're building a chicken coop to have the foresight so that you're, you're not going, oh crap, I didn't think of that or, or whatever. You know, when I was doing some videos earlier explaining some things we had to change uh, because we did not notch the rafters and purlins like we normally do, you gotta, when you're building a coop, especially in the run area, you gotta always keep things on the same plane. You can't have things going in and out or you create openings where predators can get in. Um, 
but luckily we have lots of practice. And I tell you, the other thing that's been going on here is it is bone dry. So all our lumber is heat treated and kiln dried. And what that means is they bring it down to about 6%. It keeps shrinking here. It has actually caused us a lot of problems. And um, we're getting around it and I've shot a lot of videos uh, talking about that. So I, I just missed those comments. And again, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Has the coop been more difficult than you thought or has it gone pl planned for the most part? It has definitely gone better than I thought, to be honest with you. Um, I expected a lot worse and mainly because of COVID. Everything, uh, well, actually, I take it back. All the skeletal system, all the framing, the rafters, the um, two by sixes, minus the pressure treated. I can't say that for that, but... Um, Anyways, it's all Doug Fur. I, we love Doug Fur, and there's many reasons why. And when we were pricing out this coop and negotiating and, and designing it and going over everything, it takes months designing it with the customer, getting them exactly what they want. Uh, we were worried because we weren't going to be able to find Doug Fur. And thank God it just got flooded out here on the West Coast. We're having trouble finding it on the East Coast, but out here we've had plenty of Doug Fur. So that was one I was expecting it was going to go badly. And uh, plenty of wood, not only plenty of wood, this stuff has been beautiful. And if you haven't been following us, our customer here is a structural engineer. And that can be a little nerve wracking, but I tell you, I've loved it. I've learned so much from this gentleman. And when he comes out and he's impressed, uh, that's, uh, that's awesome. Uh, so it has gone really, really well. But I tell you, we got one last major part and that is getting the roofing on. When you got roofing or a big field this big up there, a lot can go wrong. It's like setting your cornerstone. You gotta get that first panel just right. But if you take a look around here, it is wide open. And when it is windy and you're dealing with 20 foot metal panels, it's like a kite that can take off on you and decapitate you. Um, so I can't wait to get the paint done. Hopefully we'll be done painting Monday and then we'll start roofing Tuesday. And then we have a storm coming in and then we can start screening. But our goal is to be done by the end of next week, but I don't see it happening. We still got two hoppers to uh, put together that just got in from New York, from AV and Sean coming back out. Because I had to send Evan and Zach home, which I'm a little bitter about, but it is what it is. Looks awesome so far. Can't wait to see the videos when it's all done. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Day 30. Day 30 on the job site. Um, is that the biggest coop you've built? You know, I do get that question a lot. And... The total square footage, okay, of this coop, including the square footage of the hen house, including the square footage of the lot. Should, you want to go up there? You know, I haven't been up there yet, and I know we're going to have good signal. Um, Kentucky loves watching. We love Kentucky. Um, let me see. I'm going to go up on the roof real quick while I'm thinking and give you guys a different shot of everything. I want to say it's 1,068 square foot. But I'm going to ask Sean and AV. So Sean, our driver, our finishing guy, he is one of those guys that loves stats and numbers. It's kind of weird. They just did a thing. Okay, you guys still there? All right. And the signal should get better up here. It's going to get colder and windier. Yeah, right there's the wind. There, there, that's at least. Oh, all right. Whew. I love coming up here. All right, so it was 1,060. Oh, it is so windy. Can you guys still hear me? Let me know if you can still hear me. The worst one we've been up here. But uh, what I wanted to find out is the square footage. Just ran into some reception issues. Am I back? Let me know if I'm back. If not, Whew. I can't get used to the elevation here either. What was, hey, sorry to interrupt real quick. What was the square footage of the coop you guys just did in McAllen, Texas? Square footage? Well, yeah, yeah. Footprint. Okay, what was the footprint? Oh, that was a craftsman coop. Okay, 12, tw uh, 12 by 12, so that's 144, right? Yep. All right, so 144 square feet. Yep. What was the size of the hen house? Uh, so that's 72. Yep. So 144 plus 72. Keep going. Yep. By All right. So what's our total square footage? Oh, come on. No, I just bragged about you being a numbers guy. 
Well, people are asking if this is the biggest coupe we've done. I want to say it is, but I tell you, some of our other coupes are deceiving, and it's not. Just because it's the biggest doesn't make it the best. I think it's cool, though. <laughs> The run is 408, so this is definitely bigger because this is a total of 1,068. That's big. That's huge. People say this is not a chicken coop anymore. All right, so. Look at this beautiful coop. Is the cement the best base for larger coops? How wide should the base be? Wow, so I love that question because I tell you, and actually the customer just walked up who's the engineer, but I know, I don't wanna get him on camera, but I have picked his brain a lot about the technicalities. Um, he has made some interesting points about the base. Now again, here we have a ton of wind. And you know, a lot of times when you're building, you're always thinking about your live load and your dead load, I believe it's called. And here, yes, loads are important, but we had to think about the uplift because there's so much wind. And the concrete alone, what was really important is how thick the perimeter was for our anchors to not break out the sidewalls. I forget the term. God, I got to remember this term he mentioned because we always use either tap cons or expansion bolts where you put the bolt down in, you bring it up and it pushes out on the concrete and that's what holds it. The problem with that is you have that constant and pressure against that concrete and if your perimeter isn't that big and that breaks out you just lost it so we had to use we got this all on video it's a 3g epoxy made by simpson i took our largest impact couldn't break it we even had evan testing some of the uh hold hold downs with the epoxy and he couldn't break it with the um crowbar again we have that all on video but anyways the perimeter here for example is forty thousand pounds of concrete so that's like you know made me think of the sandbags that you put on those canopy tents uh, so that's going to help hold it down so if you are in an area that's high winds i'm definitely a fan of concrete mainly just to help anchor it down but also if you are in an area that has a lot of sand i like concrete because it just helps even out so, you know, think of it like a snowshoe in snow so hopefully that makes sense yeah forty thousand pounds um that blew me away because my excavator is a uh, 20 ton so that's about 40,000 pounds. I just, I can't believe how heavy just the concrete, not to mention the coupe. Um, I will tell you as an installer, I love when a customer has a contractor put in the concrete. We've done some concrete. I try to stay away from it only because when you hire a contractor, because they do it every single day, they're going to be way more affordable. They're going to be more efficient. But, and there is an art in concrete. It's not just pouring concrete and you're done. There's a lot more to it. Uh, especially again, what I've learned here. So like the perimeter here going around now, let me see if I flip the camera and yeah, you can't really see it. You got for it. It's 12 inches wide. And as soon as we get here, we do this, no matter where we go, we take the transit, shoot it with the laser level and it was dead nuts. Perfect. Then you go corner to corner and, uh, love the Ravens here. I'm not sure if you can hear them. They're great to have. We've already watched them chase away a couple Hawks. Um, and yes, ravens like crows, but ravens are probably twice as big. And what's awesome is ravens barrel roll. They barrel roll like a Maverick and Top Gun a lot. It's kind of fun. Anyways, um, so if you guys have any other questions, hopefully I'm still coming through. We are in a windy area, so how many inches across should the base be? Well, see, when you went, I don't want to confuse you, but if you are building a chicken coop and you're putting in a base, what I want to make sure is that you're not putting in one big concrete pad. That is a big no-no. You can put a pad underneath where if you're going to have a solid hen house on top. But if those chickens are going out into the run, I've had customers in the past and it's a major no-no. They pour a, a concrete pad and the chickens are walking on concrete. They don't want to be. They don't come from the city. Okay. They come from the woods. Um, but if you're doing your perimeter, I tell you what I have learned is the thickness is important if you're in a high wind area and you got to have... I don't want to say setback. I have to remember the technical term he used where you got to think about what your anchors are and how far that anchoring device is going to be from the edge of the concrete. Because if that breaks out, you lose your hold down. And again, if you've never heard of that 3G epoxy, it takes a special caulk gun. It's a double barrel caulk gun. It, it was pretty cool. Got a lot of videos showing it. And again, I was, I was a skeptic. And when I took an impact to it and couldn't break it, that blew me away. 
Yes, I miss Video Chicken as well. Thank you. I miss it so badly. I miss home. I can't wait to get home. I can't wait to see what's going on. Um, yeah, just the perimeter. Most people go five inches, and that's because we will come in and put down a two by six sill plate so it's a half inch proud sticking over because it's gonna be technically five and a half and i find that's just a very good thickness if you go too thin four inches it could crack um pour the base deep to help with predator prevention question mark there's nothing better than an apron concrete is expensive digging down is expensive it's very labor intensive um will it work yes will it work absolutely the old rule of thumb was minimum 18 inches down but if you're pouring concrete what you got to think about is you don't ever want it to settle and crack so you got to think about your sub base so to me that's more important when it comes to how far down you have to dig uh also when you get talking about frost lines <laughs> and that's a lot of fun so you can dig down and go below the frost line that way you don't have to worry about heaving or I often refer to our coops or whenever you're building a structure, if you don't want to go down below the frost line, think of it like a boat in the ocean. If that ground freezes, the whole thing's going to go up and the whole thing's going to go down. So that's where you want to be careful. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. All right. So and, uh, back to video chicken. I miss it. I've been wanting to do it here. I just cannot get signal. Um, I hope to be done here. It's, I'm going to be another two weeks, and then I will be right back on the video chicken. We got a lot of stuff. Low power mode. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Love video chicken. We got some cool guests coming up. There's something else. I can't remember. Oh, I, uh, I, I can't wait to find out. Our chicken expert, Kristen, she um, ordered a automatic door from whomever online. Wasn't one of ours, which is fine, but I know why she did it. It's because the price was so good to be true. All right, I'm not gonna call out names. I don't know all the facts yet. All right, but I have seen I, I've seen companies steal our pictures and say they're gonna sell our coop for eighty dollars. I mean, there, there's just no, it's a scam. But there was an automatic door that's been all over social media, and it's for like twenty bucks, forty bucks, and it's like how in the hell that can that be? Well, she bought it and she told me it was a total scam, a ripoff. Um, but I said, don't say anything more. I can't wait to talk about on video chicken because I try to keep it, you know, live and spontaneous. So I have no idea why she feels was, she was ripped off. I do believe something came, but I'm sure if it was that cheap, you know, you pay for what you get, especially nowadays with quality. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a different view. It's cold. Look at that cupola. We got very, look at this roof, all those purlins. Oh, and everything is down we don't just didn't just go in and shoot it um it's all screwed down three and a half inch exterior screws all dug for all dug for great wood to work with i wish i tell you i wish i had signal Fifteen thousand pounds in the middle of the span i don't know we'll go over those numbers when we do the coop how much does rain slow you guys down during building can you work through some rain live in seattle area so we love seattle we're headed out there soon while well, my guys are love the pacific northwest absolutely beautiful we adapt i tell you the only time oh sorry, i must have lost signal everyone's falling off um let me know if you can still hear me again we adapt we we travel with tents i don't know if you can see one is right there that actually took off about 30 feet in the air and came back down thankfully um we just adapt. The only time that rain becomes an issue is obviously when painting and two, when you're roofing. But other than that, we just, we deal. We've never been electrocuted. <laughs> Surprised. Um, I don't know. We just get used to it. Sucks. Rain does suck. And then of course, wind. We dealt with the cold. We put together a coop in Colorado Springs when it was like negative 14 years ago. Yeah, it's on and off. All right, so I'll let you guys go. I see once people start dropping off, I know I'm losing signal. Just miss you guys. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're having a happy Saturday. Uh, we are still building, and I appreciate the video. Are you building a coop for Matt, the Off the Ranch Demo Ranch? Got who that is. My coop is scheduled for late spring, early summer, so hopefully it'll be nice for you. Thank you. Um, spring, early summer, so hopefully it'll be nice for you. Thank you. Um, do miss it. I don't want people to just drop off and not come back. I do want to build that crowd you know we we definitely have our dedicated followers how to grow the audience and we have some ideas 
about chicken have questions. And I'm thinking, man, why don't we our links to video chicken in there? Because yes, obviously I'm trying because I love what we do, but we are also sharing a lot of information for free and helping people out. So I think that'll be worth it. So we are going to try that tactic and see if it's helpful. Um, but anyways, so I guess I'm going to go. Hope you guys are doing well. Again, happy Saturday. Hopefully we'll be done in about the next couple weeks. And there's going to be an awesome walk around video. There are so many cool little things going on with this chicken coop, especially with the communicating doors. This is basically two coops in one. So I can't wait to show that to you guys. So until next time, have a good one.